welcome to FPTV New Releases, uh, where I am absolutely honoured to be joined by Escape Pods, Mer Lafferty and SB Divya. How are you guys? Doing pretty yeah. good. Thanks. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> and, and of course, you're here to celebrate the launch of uh, Escape Pod, the science fiction anthology published by Titan Books and available from the links here attached to our interview um, that is based upon the brilliant podcast that has been running for 15 years, uh, nominated for a Hugo, that you co-edit together. Now, let me ask you guys, how did you guys first meet and how were you first teamed up on the Escape Pod podcast? Do you want to tell that, Divya? Oh, you go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was... Several years ago, uh, Escape Artists tried a, a, a print, not print magazine, but just an e-magazine, no uh, audio, and I was the editor for that. And they gave us a couple of years, and it did not work. And, you know, it's, it's in hindsight, it's like, well, Escape Artists built itself on audio, and we didn't have any audio with this specific project, but really liked working with them. And when we shuttered that, around that time is when our previous editor, Norm Sherman, was about to step down. And um, Alistair Stewart, uh, the co-owner of Escape Artists, said, you know, we want to put uh, Divya in Norm's place, but she wants a partner, so how do you feel about becoming co-editor of Escape Pod? And so I thought that was great. I, I don't actually remember the first time we met, but... Um, it's, I want to say it was at one of the world cons. Probably. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if it was uh, Spokane or the one after that. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like four years ago is too long. Um, yeah, I think uh, because because Murr was involved with other escape artist projects, um, they have a tradition of doing a breakfast on Sunday after the Hugos. And so um, I think I think that's when we probably first met. But I was really excited to to collaborate with Mur. Um, while I was I was sad about the demise of the e-zine, I was happy that it gave me an opportunity to grab her back to help me work on Escape Pod. <laughs> yeah. And the truth is, it's given birth to such an awesome five years of stories that you must be you guys must be particularly proud of of, of what you've achieved. One of the things that we were talking about. Or well, before we started recording, um, is the fact that uh, you you cast your um, podcast so well in terms of you know your your on the episodes that uh, that you you host, Mer, you've got such a, a a lovely voice, you know, kind of on the mic, and um, and by the same token, you know, the 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 people you get to narrate the stories, they're just so fantastically well cast. I think that's one of the things that you know that particularly makes Escape Pod leap out in an ocean of podcasts. I think you guys have produced so many, I think something like in the mid 700s now, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So how did you, how did you find that groove? Um, in terms of casting our narrators, uh, at this point, I think we have a pretty solid roster of narrators that uh, I like to choose from, but I usually try to go by the character, the main character of the story um, that usually has a voice in my head and, and then try to match that with uh, one of our narrators. And occasionally we'll come up with a story that uh, doesn't really quite fit with anyone we have. And I'll go digging through our database of auditions and you know people that have worked with some of our sibling podcasts and see if someone sounds right. And, and that's usually who I try to grab. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, remember, if you ever need a bombastic Northern Englishman, I'm right here. You know, I'd be, I would I'll love keep to that do. in mind. <laughs> so, so, guys, um, when you, uh, what I'm fascinated about is your co-editorial relationship. Uh, I've spent my career sort of editing magazines and editing books. Um, but the one thing I've never done is being a co-editor with somebody else. And I just can't really understand how that works. And, you know, I, I, I think that's something I would struggle with. I often struggle just editing with myself. So I would love to hear about how the, me the mechanics of your relationship. Um, well, we, we, bre we meet uh, about once a month and for a long meeting where we discuss the stories are 
uh, associate editors and our uh, assistant editor has passed up to us. And we usually end up agreeing. Um, Divya has a better sense of the science part of the science fiction. And we've only disagreed maybe on three stories. And one of them, Divya, no, wait, no, we, we didn't disagree on that one. Divya just opened her comments on it with, I will fight you for this if I disagree <laughs> with her. That's happened once. And I liked the story, so it did not have to come to that. Yeah. But uh, we, we usually find ourselves uh, agreeing like 99% of the time. Um, so it's, and, and we just look at it from different points of view, her uh, more science and me. I don't know. I don't know what I add to it, but it's, it's uh, I, I'm glad to have Divya's uh, science background on our team. I will say uh, Murr adds a lot of the uh, the heart and also literary value from time to time. <laughs> She'll be pickier about um, certain aspects of the writing than I will. And I think that's good. I think it balances out. Like she says, it's a, it's a good collaborative effort. And um, for all that it might sound painful, uh, especially when you know, you're a solo effort and you're arguing with yourself, uh, sometimes it's nice to have that second external voice, whether it's for validation or for, you know, double checking uh, yourself when you're not sure about something. Especially this year, I, I, I've read some stories and thought, okay, did I not like that just because the world's on fire and I'm in a really bad mood today? <laughs> I'm not sure. So I'll put a maybe on that and I'll talk to Divya about it because... Yeah. Maybe she's got a better view. Maybe she's having a better day than I am because I really don't want anybody to get a rejection because Murr was upset about COVID. So, uh, yeah, so it's it's nice to to have that if you have any questions. Uh, some sometimes I'll feel strongly about something and she'll be a maybe, and so we'll go my direction or uh, etc. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you know you, what you're what you're very clearly delineating here is kind of the glorious alchemy of creativity, and, and the reality is that you guys have found each other, and you know you've got that chemistry where you can work with each other, you know, and bring things to the party for each other, which is a beautiful place to be. Uh, and some people never find that, you know, some people never find somebody they can work with so effectively. When you look back on the on the years that you have been co-editing, what are the stories that you've brought to the podcast that you're, you're the most proud of? Oh gosh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot. This is a, it's a tough question. It's like asking a parent to choose a favorite child. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. yeah. Um, I mean, we're obviously we're very proud of of everything we've done. And I want to say, I guess, maybe not so much in terms of specifics, but I think um, thematically, I'm really proud of the fact that we have broadened the representation that we try to bring to escape plot stories. Yeah, right and that's on. something that we're both very conscious of on, you know, multiple dimensions, whether it's um, uh, gender or race or ethnicity or um abilities, neurodivergent stories. We've had all kinds of interesting things come in and and we try to make an effort to um, also to go out and occasionally solicit reprints to broaden the horizons of uh, what we're able to offer to our audience. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of um, since, I mean, we've been a pro paying market according to SFWA for years, yeah. but it's still just best feeling to give somebody their first pro sale and the fact that they you know tried us and it was a good match and they're absolutely over the moon thrilled and that's you know and we're like wow i thought we were really lucky to grab that story so <laughs> so it's a win-win all around but it's it's a really nice feeling knowing that i mean we're adding to what's making science fiction wonderful right now, which is bringing up new voices. And as Divya said, the, the uh, different voices than science fiction often features. So um, yeah, those are the things. See, w with me, it's really bad. I'm terrible with titles and I'm terrible with names. So I can probably tell you the plot of my favorite stories from the past several years. I'm not yeah, going right. to, because as Divya yeah. said, no favorite children, but <laughs> I don't know if I could tell you the, the name of the story or the author, because 
I, it's, I don't know. It's, it's awful, but I, I love the stories and I'm proud of them. And then I have to think about next week's. And so <laughs> it just kind of goes away. I'm going to stop talking. This is embarrassing. You go, <laughs> I think I, I think, was going to say, Oh, please. No, carry on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I'm going to say uh, a couple of the other things we've done um, that I'm pretty proud of is we've we've taken the podcast in a couple of new directions. Uh, one, because we are a 15-year-old podcast, we have a very large archive and we have new people coming in and still discovering it. So we've um, introduced a feature with the help of Alistair Stewart, who also has a wonderful voice and a wonderful um, sense of gravitas that he can bring i think to any analysis and so he hosts uh flashback stories for us so he'll dig through the archives and find something and kind of present it in a new light and the other thing we've done uh, that's a bit of a departure from previous escape pod is uh, longer stories that we run over two or three episodes and that also uh, opens up the doors to um, certain stories that we wouldn't previously have featured Okay, yeah, I, I think that I think that's that's uh, very interesting. Um, to pivot into the into the the anthology, what can you tell me about how you uh, assembled that, how you made your choices, and can you just give me a flavour of what of what's in it for all for our viewers? Okay, so our approach for the anthology was we really wanted to highlight um, kind of a cross section of what Escape Pod really means to us in terms of the types of stories. So lots of good, fun stories with uh, positive messages. Um, again, with uh, trying to kind of build up a diverse roster of authors, most of whom have been featured on the podcast at some point in the past. We especially tried to highlight some of the authors who came in early in their careers and have now burgeoned into um, lovely, very successful, uh, writing careers. MacArthur um, Grant receivers, people yes. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hugo Award winners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Nebula just, Award just winners. those people. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, just those people. Um, and, and, you know, obviously we're very proud that uh, you know, we were one of the magazines that they, that they gave their stories to early on. And that as well as new upcoming stars like uh, Sarah Gailey or Beth Cato. Um, so we tried to, yeah, we tried to kind of do a, a highlight reel in a way, not necessarily just taking stories that were featured on Escape Pod previously, though there are some of those, but also a lot of new stories that just kind of fit with what Escape Pod means. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's um that's that's uh that's very interesting. And can you give me can you give me a I guess it's difficult to do with an anthology. Can you give me a flavor of any of the tales that we will encounter in this book? Well, we've got um, at least two that are uh, "Hurt Yourself" hilarious. Yeah, uh, a reprint Brilliant. by John, reprint by John Scalzi, and a, a new one by uh, T. Kingfisher, who is Ursula Vernon's uh, uh, pen name. And uh, we've got a super absurd story from Sarah Gailey. We've got more serious stories of. Uh, class and space and the future from Greg Van Eekhout and uh, class also covered in uh, and race in Maurice Broaddus's story. And those get a little bit more serious, but then we have class covered again in space by Tina Connolly's story, which turns into a teenage love story. And so I think uh, it, it's really hard when uh, Sarah started the show, she wants, she's like, there's plenty of dark science fiction out there. There's plenty of, you know, yeah. break your heart or rip your guts out or make you look at the world through another lens and see how terrible it is. And, and, you know, she's just like, how about we do fun stories? And what's really interesting is in the past several years, we've had to redefine what fun means because it doesn't always mean comedy. It doesn't always mean a happy ending, but, uh, so if we say like the the stories give you a sense of satisfaction for sure and some are funny some will make you smile some will make you think but you know it, it's important to get like all a lot of different stories in an anthology where you think you could hand it to any 
fan and say, you'll find something in here that you like. Yeah. And, but still trying to, uh, yeah, following that fun thing has been much more of a challenge than I thought it would be. But I yeah. still try to uh, keep it in mind because it is it, it it was Sarah's main plan for the show. Yeah, I, I mean I think that 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 sounds wonderful. And uh, and you know to close out on if you've spent any time with this glorious podcast, I think you're in for a real treat uh, with this anthology. Uh, and uh, I do indeed think you're absolutely right that you guys have both covered all the bases. Um, uh, Divya and Mer, thank you very much for spending these 10 minutes with us, rocking us through the Escape Pod anthology, which is available from the links attached to this interview. Thanks for carving out some time from your day for us as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Having us. Yeah, it was lovely to meet you both then. You take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, you're going to really enjoy this book. It's, it's an amazing ride. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you.